wanted to do a quick overview of the making of my court canvas shoe. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting out with, um, with some raw material. Um, I am using leather um, to do this portion of the midsole. And what I'm doing differently with this pair of shoes is I am using, there's no shank in the shoe. I prefer to not add them, but I really wanted a walking shoe that would <clears throat> be really flexible. Um, I did ballet for 15 years, so a lot of how my feet react to shoes is really shaped by that. Um, I get really weirded out when I can't feel the floor. There's some people in this world who love cushy shoes. Um, I like comfortable shoes, but um, especially if I'm doing a lot of walking, I can't, it, I, it does not set my mind or body at ease to not have some kind of recognition of what's going on on the floor. But I also really want a comfortable, you know, shoe. So what I did is I uh, roughed up the leather and uh, I got some cork. Uh, I think that's about a, qu a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch thick cork. Um, and what I'm doing in this step is I'm roughing up the surface of both parts uh, before I apply the glue, um, which is barge cement, by the way. Um, so that they'll adhere stronger. So now that I've got the glue up done, what I'm doing here is I'm applying uh, the soles <laughs> to the that looks so weird when it's in fast forward, but um, to to the can to the cork. And then what I've done is I've used a piece of wood to clamp and hold it down while the glue dries and cures. So in this step, I'm um, starting to do the patterning for uh, the for the shoe, you know, for the, the part of the shoe that you recognize as shoe. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm using blue, very thin painters tape for my first layer um, of making the pattern. I find that it helps the pattern come off of the last um, easier. Um, I'm still using like regular masking tape, you know, for the for this step of pattern making, which is actually drawing the pattern onto the last. Um, but I always like to use that blue painters tape on that first layer. Um, it was kind of a challenge for me to find a, a pair of lasts that I really enjoyed. So. Coming across this pair was awesome, and I'd like to keep them awesome. So uh, instead of using uh, this masking tape, which le leaves this kind of film on the last, um, I just use that blue painter's tape. So once you have everything um, masking taped up on your last, then um, your next step is to just go ahead and draw your shoe. Um, it's not that complicated. I'm not a, an artist that has lots of uh, freehand drawing skills. I'm more of a materials person and less of a sketchy person. So for me, I find that um, once I have a very concrete vision in my mind of what I want, um, the pattern really easily flows from that. So that's what I'm doing in this step is I've drawn my pattern onto my taped mask at last. And uh, in this step, I'm now beginning to remove parts of the pattern um, from the last. And um, I'm preparing 
the pattern for being cut out of uh, canvas. So um, what I did there is I um, kind of created these little snips in the edges so that I can um, do actually two crucial things. Um, get a flat pattern made from what I created on the last. And um, also in this step, I'm using what I drew on the last as the basis for all the other parts of this shoe. Um, the shoe at the heel and at the toe has buckram. So um, some parts of the shoe, there's like two, sometimes three layers of material. Um, and, and to get the pattern for those three layers, um, I just sort of photocopy each section and then um, redraw, sketch out the patterns for that. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm uh, cutting out the pattern. So you still have to add things like seam allowance and all this other stuff. Um, for this pair of shoes, I made the seam allowance is very tiny, um, like a quarter of an inch. Um, it worked out for me in the end, but if I make another pair, I'm not doing that. Normally I would do a shoe like this in leather, but I just really like canvas. It lets my feet breathe and um, this, the goal that I have for this shoe is to have like a really bomb walking shoe. So consistent with that, I felt canvas might be the better call. Um, not that I haven't gone walking like for miles, like or even running for miles in my super baller like leather shoes, but for this pair specifically, it's really, really. I've just had a burning desire to use canvas on a shoe. I don't need to justify that. It's a bomb shoe. So this step is like <laughs> the more tedious one. Um, I'm so sorry, I sound so exasperated, but it was really frustrating. So I have this one detail. I've tried to have as few cuts of material in my shoes as is humanly possible. Um, but I have long had this vision of uh, these, I've had these like decorative zippers that I bought for a handbag that I never made the handbag, but I really like the zipper. And I thought it'd be a cool detail to add to this camp shoe. And this is what I'm doing. And it's really, it's a really simple thing to add a zipper, but it became oddly complicated with this shoe. Um, because I wanted to leverage the length of the, um, I wanted to leverage like the length of the zipper and Kind of integrate that in with the overall design of the shoe um it was just challenging I, I i don't know um and it's weird because the the pattern i took my pattern a few times and I'm, i think you see me doing that here uh and the pattern was like perfectly correct i just it's just when you have really small quarter inch seam allowances, what you really have is a one eighth inch seam allowance, which is a really tiny amount of space to work with and get a really clean finish. So what I'm doing here um, is I've dry fit some of the pieces together. Um, you'll see me stepping away from the work desk um, because what I'm doing is I'm going and um, just double and triple checking that all my measurements are right because, um, you know, it's just, there's something with this, the zipper is flexible, but it's also um, abnormally heavy because of how the manufacturer of the zipper finished the zipper. It's got this very beautiful, very, very shiny finish on it, which is really why I like it. But that also served to make the zipper a little heavier than I had earlier anticipated. And also uh, just like the sheer weight of the zipper is abnormally heavy. And I, there are heavy duty zippers used in shoes. This is not the first one that's ever been used on a shoe, but it, it is, it was heavy. 
and um, that totally threw me for a loop because I, when I had originally sort of sketched out the design, um, I'm not sure why, but I, I just thought it didn't weigh as much as it did. But anyway, it's a shoe. So um, when you use materials like buckram and cork, and um, you're able to use the materials that are going into uh, making the upper of the shoe to help kind of support these weird details like zippers that are un abnormally heavy. Um, wow, I did step away for a while. Well, hey, since we're just staring at a pair of laughs here, um, I can tell you where I found my stuff. Um, I live in Los Angeles and we have really great design resources here. There's a place called Sederma Leather and they are on Western at, I want to say Fountain. It might actually be Santa Monica. I think their address is like 1000 Western, Northwestern. So look up Sederma, S-A-D-E-R-M-A. They're awesome. Banker's Hours, nine to five. Um, they have all kinds of leather for shoes. Um, this is where I found the last for these shoes. So they're, they're great. Okay, cool. So it uh, looks like I finished uh, the stitch up of my canvas. I'm excited. So now the challenge is um, I did a dry fit with the buckram and I really wasn't excited about it. Um, it just didn't, it didn't do what I thought it was going to do. So uh, seeing that the buckram was a no-go, what I've decided to do is go full-blown old school and I am starching my shoe. <laughs> so you didn't see that, but the reason why I have this aluminum pan is because um, I went ahead and used straight, like starch, starchy starch. I used to use starch on everything in the old days um, to provide uh, extra body and shaping and support to the shoe. Um, one thing I like to do is uh, wrap my recently starched shoes in an ace bandage. So that's what I did there. Um, so now it looks like uh, these are done. The cork and the leather have been really tightly bonded with barge cement um, together. So that's great. So I'm going to take my Dremel and uh, go through and just sort of like clean up the shape. And yes, I do. You're going to see me use like five different vacuums. I have, I literally have that many vacuums. Um, so yeah, so uh, if you don't like the shape, go ahead and shape it again. Um, I didn't shape, I didn't fully complete the shaping of the leather until after uh, the glue up of the cork and the leather together. So yeah, like take whatever time you need. See, in this step, I'm using a skiv. Um, so skimming the edges of your leather, not totally necessary depending on the style of your shoe, but I chose to skim the edges on this guy um, because of the overall kind of shape and wear and vibe that I want to get out of it. Um, also, cork is bouncy and very shock absorptive. So really important to get that shape right. Um, oh, I wish I had moved the camera, but what I'm doing now is I'm using a needle and thread to uh, further like shape the fabric on the last. So now that I have, um, it's all the starch and all that stuff is on there. It's, this is actually still wet. Really don't like sewing when things are wet. It feels weird to me, but um, really necessary that you very tightly stitch the canvas onto the last while you are shaping the textile um, with starch. Because uh, right now it's saturated in this starch solution. So I really, really wanted to just kind of stitch everything up really quickly, get it taut, nice, tight on, you know, get it on the last, get it to dry for a few hours and um, you know taking the extra time to do this and I actually don't like uh, 
the leather definitely hammer and nails for textiles just grab a curved needle and thread and seriously just like stitch the shit out of it like just yeah there i there, i don't i don't know i don't know i'm not that sophisticated so um this is what i do to get the shape that i want out of the shoes that i like and yeah so um you know once everything is stitched up in this step what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave it out in the sun to dry um because why not uh, there's two reasons I actually really like leaving them out in the sun to dry. Uh, it tend, it dries because there's heat and warmth. Um, but also, uh, I really don't want any funk coming from like bacteria or whatever. So I like having airflow while my shoes are drying up. So yeah. Okay. So this is more, I, we're almost done here, but I, I'm just like thinking about other shoes at this point. So that's my process. I'll go ahead and um, put up some photos and videos of the completed shoe uh, once the uh, once I finish this glue process and once I finish uh, the soles. And is that it? Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to like make some shoes. Oh yeah, that's another shoe idea that I had. Let's think about some more shoes. All you gotta do is think about the shoes and make the shoe.